Hello. David Zaritsky for the Bond Experience. Welcome back. Well, it is another countdown. You seem to like them. I sure do. This one is our top seven, top 007 countdown to James Bond polos. And this time it's not just Daniel Craig. It's going to run the entire gamut of James Bond movies. But which one make the top seven? First of all, this one doesn't. This is the Oliver Brown interpretation of the Thunderball Capri linen. This is great, but I don't count this as a polo. There'll be enough top seven things on button-down shirts or camp shirts or camp collar shirts, whatever you call this, but we're talking about strictly polos. Now, polo, in essence, some people say, is it three button, four button, is it only short sleeve? We say yes, it's short sleeve and long sleeve. So it could be three or four button, but you know what a polo is. It could be long sleeve, short sleeve. We're gonna cover these. And without further ado, let's jump right in to number seven. Coming in at number seven is the Spectre Tom Ford Polo. Now, let's harken back to the movie a little bit. The movie itself had Bond in Morocco, he shows up wearing that matchless jacket. The um, outfit looks amazing. A lot of us have either interpreted or copied it. He's with Madeline. He goes to La Maracan. He has a couple of really cool moments where he's ripping the place apart. You can really see the polo well. Uh, fits into a T. Come on, it's Tom Ford. It's made for him. And one of the great things is, is he has that scene with the mouse he's been drinking, and it's just this great kind of found moment that he finds the secret room. I mean, it's got some great Bond, sneaky, funny, appreciative moments, and the place looks great. He looks great. It had to make it into the top seven. So let's talk about this. Now, you know this already if you've watched this channel. I'm a size 40 and 31 here. This is a size 48. And the fit, I believe, is right for me. I did try on a size 50, it was a little bit too big. Didn't really look the screen accurate part. This does. We're gonna get up close. This has almost um, kind of a, an interesting type weave to it, like a pick weave. Check this out though, pretty deep V. A uh, pretty deep V. This, is, this V is not for everybody. You could take a look at it there. Um, that's pretty deep and I can even, tell you uh, from experience that when I first started wearing it, I'm, I was a little conscious of the V because it's a little bit long for me. But the shirt itself, I mean, the way uh, the biceps hit and fit, you can see the back. I mean, it fits to the nines and I love, love, love this banded bottom. There's something about banded bottom shirts that not um, only look vintage, but they really do make you look fitted. It's, it's a little bit um, more finished if you will. There's no other way that I can kind of describe that. But what I love about this shirt is uh, Tom Ford connection point, obviously. It smacks of Bond now. It's It's got a really wonderful Spectre moment. I really do like that moment in the movie. Um, there's a couple of points in Spectre that I, I'm not a fan of. But this one I am. So I love the outfit. I love the connection. The polo fits great. The other thing is wearability. I've worn this out in the real world. Imagine who thought that I was a part of the real world. And it functions really well. It doesn't make anybody kind of go like, huh. Uh, it, it has those connection points that you want, but from a fashion, from a function, from, um, you know, just feature standpoint, it really ticks off all the checks. So it had to make it into the top seven. Coming in at number six, it is the Venice Polo from Casino Royale. Now, again, we're talking that these are polos. It's not necessarily a uh, short sleeve shirt. This is considered a polo. Now, you remember this from the movie. Of course you do. He wears this quite a bit. He wears this uh, in Venice and he wears this while he's running and searching for Vesper and angry and the house is falling apart. And at the end when he's cradling her, I mean, there's a lot of different scenes where you see this. I love the shirt. It had to make the top seven. By the way, let's get in a little bit closer. This interpretation is the one by Magnoli. You know him. He does a lot of uh, the Bond replicas. I think he did the best job. There's been a lot of, uh, uh, 
budget, iconic alternatives, if you will, to this shirt. But this one really looks the part. It's got the right fit. Uh, it's got the right feel. A lot of people get the collar wrong. He got the collar right. It's got the little placket. The color is correct. You want to pair it with dark pants. So when you're running, it looks the part. And if you can, tie it with a Sunspell t-shirt. That's what Bond wore underneath, so why wouldn't you? And that's why I love this. This is an invisible Bond outfit. If I wore this out or to a party or walking through town, nobody would say, my God, would you look at that guy? He's cosplaying as James Bond. No, this is kind of a rugby-like shirt. It's a classic blue. It connects really well to our favorite color. I know yours is blue too, probably. Uh, and it captures that Bond moment, but just like an Omega watch, which I am wearing the right one with this, the Planet Ocean, it transports you very quickly to that moment. And I'm sorry, who doesn't like Casino Royale? So it's got that movie connection. It's got the Invisible Bond connection. Uh, it is something that you can simply put together. It's not very complicated. We don't have a brand associated with it, so we're not a quote unquote slave to that. No, this is something that we can all interpret and push forward. So it had to make it within the top ones. Coming in at number five is the Quantum of Solace Tom Ford Polo. Let's take you back. So in Quantum of Solace, Bond goes to Haiti. You remember the moment. He sneaks off there. He's still on a mission and he breaks into Mr. Slate's place in the hotel. He gets into that incredible fight. He gets cut up ripped apart. It is like a real Bond moment. Probably one of the most badass Bond moments, which I think is why a lot of people connect to this polo. And in some uh, behind the scenes shot, you can actually see Bond uh, running in it without his Tom Ford Harrington. So it's got a lot of collection and connection and play into some people, some people. Quantum of Solace has some of the best Bond clothing, never mind Daniel Craig clothing, some of the best Bond clothing. So here it is. Here's the Tom Ford Quantum of Solace Polo. Now you can see if I come up a little bit closer, it's peak, but uh, peak, but it's made out of kind of a, a linen mix. So it's got a lot of, watch this, I always do this with this shirt. It's got a lot of swing to it. It also doesn't fit like a typical polo. Typical polo, polos kind of come down like this. They kind of V, if you will. This bells out a little bit. It literally has swings. And you can see this when he's opening the door and when he's fighting with, um, when he's fighting with Mr. Slate and he's, you know, he's kind of going like this, you, you can literally, the, the shirt is swinging around him. If you freeze frame or slow frame it, and who would have done that? I know you haven't done that. Yeah, right. You can see this thing really in action. It still has those wonderful connection points with Tom Ford. The, um, the, the thing is, too, we actually started a project where we were trying to make another run of these for Bond fans out there. And we've started that process. It's kind of chugging along slowly, but we hope to get more names uh, connected. If you're interested, by the way, you can, you can email me or, or comment below. Uh, but some people want to own this, not just because they need another Navy polo, but because it's got that uniqueness to Quantum of Solace. Tom Ford, and it's a little bit different in certain ways. So it had to make, of course, the top seven. Number four on our countdown. You thought we were moving away from Thunderbolt? No, we're going to stay here because it is what I refer to affectionately as the Shrublands Sneaky Bond Polo. Now, yes, this is a long sleeve polo, but we told you those count. What's great about this is this is the Olibar Brown uh, interpretation. It is a navy blue. I believe the one in the movie that you see is a black one. And I think they're both merino wool. This one is that merino wool. We're going to get up a little bit close so you can see that navy really popping and standing out. This one has a banded bottom, so it really looks the parts got that vintagey look. But here's the cool thing. Harken back to the moment that you see Bond in this polo. He's walking through shrublands and he rolls up his sleeves. He is the epitome of cat-like. He's running into bad guys. He's running into good guys. He's running into women in the hallways. He's making people happy. He's making people upset. This polo sees a lot of 
action. And Bond is about action. And it's got that kind of uh, sleekness to that, that kind of dark spy interpretation. This one, I love. You've heard me talk about it before. Um, when I saw it, uh, when All Bar Brown had their launch party, I'm like, that is the piece. If I have to walk out with one, it's going to be this one. Um, fits incredibly well. This is a medium. And uh, for me, that's perfect. Some of you have sized up with this one because it does fit. I mean, you can see, you know, it, it's fitted. So do it to your body type. What I love about this is, and with a lot of wool things, you would be like, no, don't do that. But you can do the whole Connery thing and uh, pull it up and make it into a short sleeve polo. If you really wanted to, you could even pull it up a little bit higher. I've seen some of you actually do that and it looks super cool. And then you've got the sneaky Connery or look at me sneak. Look at me. That's 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 good action. You you don't get that everywhere on YouTube, folks. Uh, only here do you get that type of sneaky bond action. But this polo had to make number four because of the connection. Again, back to Connery, back to sneaky bond, back to polo, and the fact that this thing is unbelievably confident. It's got that form and function that we all like. Coming in at number three is the Fred Perry Thunderball Polo. Now, let's bring you back to that part of Thunderball where Bond comes out of the water. He's got the white Jansen uh, swimsuit and um, Viona Volpe pulls up in the car and he's got this polo on. It fits him to a T and why not? Uh, he looks great in it. She takes him for a ride. Remember that? That, that great Sean Connery line. He looks the mustard as my uh, friends from the UK say, and I'm stealing everything from them solely, one thing at a time. But what's great about this uh, polo is it is a slim cut polo, which is very much a sign of the times of the 1960s. This is how it fit. Now, Fred Perry uh, was a tennis player, just like um, Lacoste was a tennis player. Um, we're going to come in a little bit closer so you can see this a little bit better. There's the Fred Perry logo. It is in white. Sometimes it's in blue. The one in the movie is a dark navy just like this it's cut just like this you can see where it's cut on the bicep it's got the white logo and this is the way it's fitted in the movie now here's something super cool they still offer this polo it's it's a little bit of a homage throwback but what's cool about this is i think they call it the m but double check me if I'm wrong. There's, there's two versions. There's uh, one that's made in China. There's one that's made in England. Uh, so you can kind of guess which one I tend to like. But this one is slim fitted. There's a regular fit one as well. You can see when we say slim fitted, it fits well. Um, again, you know, you know my sizes, so I don't have to be redundant. This is a size medium. I believe. No, it is. It's a size medium. And so um, if I had gone too small, it would have been a little shrink wrappy. But this gives me that vintage look that I'm looking for. And again, we're going to get up close uh, the details. Now, this is a peak or PK. Um, PK usually has this kind of, it can get a little itchy, a little rough, a little coarse, especially as time goes on. This hasn't. So this speaks to the quality of it. It's still nice and soft. And again, it doesn't have that golf shirt kind of hanging down thing. It fits higher on the bicep, not too tight. It's loose enough that I could definitely, and you can wear this with anything. I mean, I'm wearing this right now with a couple uh, beige color chinos, but you could really uh, pair this with shorts, uh, any really color, it's got that type of versatility. And that's the thing about a blue polo. I know I've got a million of them. I know you have a million of them, but this to me really harkens back to Thunderball. It's got that nod to Sean Connery, but it also replicates the look pretty perfectly. So I had to make it number three. Coming in at number two, it is of course the Dr. No Polo. How could this not have ranked so high. Of course it has to, because to me, when you see Sean Connery in the Dr. No polo, it is just vintage Bond. It looks the part. To me, it's that indelible, iconic image. I am wearing the Olibar Brown homage. Uh, it has a lot of the details, the collar, um, the, uh, the, the arms. 
very connected to that Connery look, but they did their own interpretation. They did it in a toweling. And by the way, this toweling, why am I rubbing myself, David? Come on, you're on, you're on YouTube. It is super plush. I mean, they've done toweling before, but this is super plush. Let's harken back to when Connery wore this. You see him um, obviously in Jamaica. So right there, it has that Ian Fleming connection. It is really simple. It is blue pants, the blue shirt. Uh, he meets Ursula Andress. He's with Quirrell. He's got those character moments. He's got those action moments. And you pretty much see him in that polo all the way through to where he's in Dr. No's lair. So this polo sees an incredible amount of film time and action. And of course, if you look at posters and images from that part, um, in, from that film, you really see him smack of that. Plus, let's, let's face it, Connery was, um, you know, he, he was a fitness guy. He was a weightlifter, you know. He, he could really show off his form and function. And that's what's great about this polo. This really does show off the form and function. You could take a look at the fit right now. Um, this is a size medium. It fits me perfectly. I wouldn't have gotten a small. I wouldn't have gotten a large. What I love about this is blue polos. You know, I have so many dark navy ones. I know you do too. Um, this is different. It's not just the toweling, it's not just the, the, the ribbing, it's not just the details, it is the color. The color is this blue that smacks of spring and summertime and, and, and warmth and sunshine and island life and all those things. Whether you're on an island or you're somewhere in the middle of Pennsylvania, it doesn't matter. It transports you there and that's the really cool thing because Dr. No was one of those first films, forget about Bond film, but film in general that transported the audience to a different world, a different life about island life that wasn't as prevalent as it is now. The shirt does the same thing. It's got that kind of connection to it that propels you back. And that's something to be said about an item of clothing. And coming in at number one on our list of 007 polos is the Casino Royale Sunspell Riviera Polo. I'm sorry. It had to be number one. And let me tell you why. There's no other image in Daniel Craig history of the Bond films that we've all tried to emulate and replicate than this image when you see Bond in the Bahamas, when he meets up with M, when he speaks to her, when he gets his little chip in his arm. Ow. I'm sorry, folks. If I go to a James Bond gathering, what do I see? I see a lot of guys in chinos, beige colored, and these types of polos. Whether it's the Sunspell Riviera or something like it, this is the look that everybody connects with. And why? Well, it's, it's simple. It's effortless. Chances are we were dressing like this in these colors, these dark navy polos, the same kind of fit for a long time. Now, Sunspell has done some things differently. First of all, I know that you know this from Casino Royale, but they're in it a lot. They're in it with uh, the different t-shirts and obviously this Riviera polo. And I've said it many times, but chances are if you are being appreciative of your funds and your hard earned money, but you want to get a James Bond piece of kit, a James Bond piece of luxury clothing, Chances are, despite all the brands that we love and connect with, you're probably going to get the Riviera Polo. It, it translates to so many different parts of your life, plus it receives high marks. This is a size small. Now, you know my sizing already. I got small. I've gotten medium in the past, but I like the way the small fits. Um, you can see that it's fitted on me, but I still have plenty of room for movement which I really like. If I come back here, you can also see that it fits really well on the bicep. This has not been tailored. This was right out of the box. And what's great about this is, and you know this already, the whole connection to Bond is pretty unquestionable. I got this, by the way, from our good friends. But James Bond and the Sunspell Riviera Polo, handsome, poised, and difficult to argue with. Our Riviera Polo shirt shares more than a few of Bond's finer qualities. When Academy Award winning costume designer Lindy Hemming asked us to design a polo to be worn by Daniel Craig, Craig, in 
<laughs> in his role as James Bond in Casino Royale, we began with a style that have been making since the 1950s, which by the way, they have modernized, which is good for us. We tailored it to Craig's exact measurements, slimming the fit across the chest and making the arms slightly shorter to flatter his physique and allow him to move cleanly and easily in his action sequences. Now what's cool about that is, despite anybody's physique, look, size, I don't think any of us have what Daniel Craig has going right now, um, it does flatter you. It does. It's, it's got that kind of forgiving silhouette. Um, many people size right accordingly. They size up. Some people size down. It really depends on where you want to go. But it does all the connection parts. Plus, it's got that history of Bond. And we talk about the invisible Bond moment. It doesn't really get more invisible than this. Uh, my wife, uh, Danielle, jokes all the time uh, when we go out. She's like, so, you're going to wear a blue polo? Yeah, maybe, probably, I don't know. Um, and chances are, it is this one. It's the Riviera Polo. By the way, this is not peak. This is like a lattice weave. Uh, the weave itself, you can read about it on their website. It is not peak or PK. Um, it is much softer and it breathes. It's got these really cool, let me see if it, I can see when you probably can see chest hairs, which is really disturbing. But it breathes, it breathes with you. Today, right outside while I'm filming this, it's going to be 90 degrees. This is a very appreciative shirt. So, functionality, fashion, connection to Bond. It's got all of those things. It wraps it up so nicely in one of my favorite movies. No, I'm sorry, my favorite James Bond movie connected to one of my favorite James Bond actors. My gosh, folks, if there were 10 boxes to check, this would check 10. So, from a score, I had to give it number one. All right, so there are your top 007 countdown of polos. Those are my favorite, but you know how this works. I want to hear, what are your favorites? What are the ones that you go to? What are your holy grails? What are the ones you don't own? Put them in the comments. I'm going to read all of them. So, um, lest you think I'm not, I will read all of those comments. I want to hear, do you agree, disagree? Do you think I'm crazy? What would your top seven be? In the meantime, you know we're going to do one of these again real soon. What countdowns do you want to see? I'd love to know because they're so much fun to do. But um, I don't think I'm done joyriding, so I'm going to let you go and have your afternoon, morning, or evening. And this has been David Zeritsky for The Bond Experience, and we will see you very soon. Take care. Thanks for watching this episode. If you want to be up on the latest from the Bond experience, just click on this subscribe and subscribe to our channel. You're going to get all the latest and greatest information plus some exclusive content. And by the way, speaking of content, here's something especially for you just because we know you. Talk to you soon.